So today's video is about acid-base indicators and using them to estimate pH of a solution. This is for grade 10 science and the chemistry in action unit. Indicators or acid-base indicators are special chemicals that have different colors depending on the pH that they're in. If you put an indicator into a solution at a certain pH value, it'll be one color. And if you put it into a solution with a different pH, it may be a different color. And they change color at a particular pH value. The most common acid-base indicator is litmus. You've probably heard of that it's in middle school or even elementary school. Litmus is so common because it changes color at a neutral pH of 7. Remember that pH 7 at room temperature is a neutral pH value. pHs below 7 are acidic and pHs above 7 are basic. With litmus, if the pH of the solution it's in is below 7, in other words, if you're putting litmus into an acid solution, the litmus turns red. So litmus is red in acid solutions. If the pH is higher than 7, so you have a basic solution, if you put litmus into there, the litmus turns blue. Now sometimes litmus, well very often, litmus is actually applied to some paper and then it's allowed to dry. It can be put on the paper when it's in the pink form or it can be put on paper in the blue form. When the paper's dry, what you now have is called litmus paper. And you've probably used it before. There's a picture here on the side. This person on the left has, is holding in their hand a piece of blue litmus paper. If you look right where their hand is, it's blue. They're dipping it into an acid solution, and we just said that if litmus goes into an acid, it turns red. So in the solution, the litmus paper there is turning red. That's the test for an acid. You have an acid, you know the pH is below 7. If you put blue litmus paper into the solution and it turns red. On the other hand, if you have pink litmus paper, or even if you took that uh, piece of paper you just dipped in the acid and it turned pink, if you dip that into a base, so dip it into a solution whose pH is above 7, then the red litmus paper would turn blue. So litmus paper is used to quickly determine if you have an acid or a base, okay? Make sure you're familiar and you can describe the litmus test. But litmus is just one of many, many, many acid-base indicators. Here on the left side of this table, we see a list of several indicators. There are hundreds or thousands of indicators out there. Um, methyl violet, thymol blue, some of them have strange names, brome cresol green. Down below, you have something called phenol phthalene. And underneath that, thymol thaline. So these are strangely named chemicals. But notice this, uh, let's interpret these color stripes. Take a look at methyl violet, the one at the top of the list here. Methyl violet, notice that it has a yellow color when the pH is very low. So if the pH here is, looks like it's, it's below about 0 0.5 pH value, the methyl violet is yellow. But if the pH is above 1, it looks like methyl violet turns violet. So it's yellow below pH 0.5. It's clearly violet when the pH is above 1. Even over here at pH 6 or pH 4 or pH 9, methyl violet would be violet. In between 0.5 and 1, that's where it's changing color, and it may be hard to describe what the color is there. But clearly, below pH about 0.5, you'd see yellow, and at any pH above 1, methyl violet would be violet colored. Another very common indicator is phenolphthalein, down below, near the bottom of the list. Phenolphthalein we use a lot in grade 12 chemistry. Look at its color change. The pH where it changes color, so around here, I guess, it's changing color. At around pH oh, about 8 to 9 is where it's changing color. If the pH is below 8, at any pH value below 8, phenolphthalein would look colorless. 
So if you put phenolphthalein in a liquid, and what you have looks like water, it's colorless, then you know the pH is less than 8. But when the, P, when the phenolphthalein is put into a solution with a high pH, oh, let's say around 9 or higher, then here it says it turns red. Usually we say it turns pink. Phenolphthalein usually turns pink is a more accurate description, but people just say red because of this, this, uh, this uh, table we're using. So if, it, if you have phenolphthalein that looks pinkish or red, you know the pH is above 9. Okay? Now some indicators actually have multiple color changes. Take a look at thymol blue, the second one on this list. Thymol blue, when the pH is very low, so at any pH value over here, actually let me change my highlighter color, at any pH over here, the thymol blue is red. Then at around pH 2, which is maybe just a little bit before that, it starts to change color. When the pH is above 2, at any pH from just above 2 all the way up to around pH 8 or maybe even pH 9, it's going to be yellow. So at anywhere in between there, it's yellow. And then when the pH gets above 9, maybe a little bit higher than that, the, so the color of this indicator turns blue. So with thymol blue, if you saw red after adding thymol blue, you'd know the pH is very low. It's about 2 or lower. If you see blue with thymol blue, you know the pH is very high. It's higher than 9 or higher than 10. If you see yellow with thymol blue, then the pH is somewhere in between there. It's somewhere between 2 and 9 or 2 and 10. Okay, So that's how you interpret these indicators. I've got a table down below here. Suppose you add methyl orange to a solution whose pH was 10. So you're putting methyl orange, that's whoops, this indicator up here, into a solution, and the pH of that solution is 10. What color would you see? Well, looking over here, when the pH is 10, that's over here. With methyl orange, that's going to be in the yellow-orange region. So we would see a yellow-orange. Phenolphthalein, you put that indicator into a solution whose pH is 5. What color would you see? So phenolphthalein, this guy down here, you're putting it into a solution of pH 5. What color would you expect? Well, phenolphthalein at pH 5, pH 5 is around here, that's in its colorless region. So phenolphthalein would be colorless. It would look like water. Brome thymol blue at pH 2. So put a few drops of brome thymol blue into a solution whose pH is 2. What color would you expect to see? Well, pH 2, about there, that's in the yellow region for brome thymol blue, so it will be yellow. And finally, chlorophenol red, if you put it into a solution at pH 8. So chlorophenol red is right above the brome thymol blue. Oops, let me erase these other dots here. The pH it said was 8. So what would be the color for that indicator at pH 8? Well, the 8 is over here. That's on the red side. So chlorophenol red would look red at pH 8. Okay, now suppose you have an indicator of phenol red and you see after adding it to a solution that the color is yellow. Then what possible range of pH values could you have? So phenol red and it's yellow. So we go down and find phenol red, here it is, and we see that the color was yellow. So it changes color to yellow about here, which is around pH 7, looking up above. So if you tell me that phenol red is yellow, all I can say is the pH is less than 7. So that's what I'll say here. 
it's less than seven, or you might say zero to seven would be the possible pH values, less than seven. pH values don't have to start at zero if you can actually have negative pH values, but that's very, very uncommon. So usually you'll see a pH scale that starts at zero. Thymol thaline, and you see blue. So what's the possible pH range if you're using thymol thaline, so this guy here, and you see a blue color? While it changes to blue, looking up here, at around pH 9 or 9.5-ish. Nine so if it is blue, the pH would be, oh, 9.5 or 10 and greater. Okay, so you can say here 9.5 and up, or maybe over 9.5, okay? The pH range is somewhere above 9.5. Methyl red, and you see red. So here's methyl red, and you see the color is red. What's the possible pH range for that? Well, methyl red changes to red, at around pH 5. So if it's red, you could say the pH is less than 5, or 0 to 5. Less than 5 would be another way to put that. Thymol blue, and you see yellow. So thymol blue, and you see yellow. So here's the thymol blue, and you see the pH is, the color is yellow. What's the possible pH range? Well, it changes to yellow close to pH 2, but then it changes to blue close to pH 9. So if it's yellow, it's going to be between 2 and 9. Okay, now I'm estimating the 2 and the 9. If you said something like 2.5 or you said something like 8.5, I'd be fine with that. 2 to 9 is just a rough estimate. Okay, now sometimes you would use more than one indicator and determine a range of pH values. So for example, suppose you put two indicators into a solution. You divide your solution into two beakers, you put a drop of phenolphthalein in one of the beakers, it's colorless. And you put a drop of methyl red in the other beaker and it's yellow. So what would be the pH range for that solution? Look at the table up above. Let's find the two indicators. So phenolphthalein is this guy here. Methyl red is this guy here. So you took your solution, you divided it into two beakers, you put a drop of phenolphthalein into one beaker and saw colorless. What does that tell you about the pH? You put a drop of methyl red in the other beaker and saw yellow. What does that tell you about the pH? Give me a possible range for the pH values. Well, for the phenolphthalein, if it's colorless, the pH is going to be less than around 8, 8.5 or 8. Okay? The pH would be less than that. For methyl red, if it's yellow, methyl red turns yellow at around pH 5 or a little bit higher than that. So that means the pH of our solution is higher than 5, but less than 8. So our pH value was, would be somewhere between 5 and 8. Okay? And again, I'm estimating the 5 and the 8. You might have said, you might have said 5.5. You might have said, oh, 8.2. As long as we're reasonably close to this, you'd be good. What about methyl orange? When you put it into one beaker of the solution, it's red. But when you put thymol blue into the same solution, you see yellow color. So what would that tell you about the pH? So with methyl orange, that's this guy up here, and thymol blue, which is right above it. So with the methyl orange, you see red. And with the thymol, sorry, in the thymol blue, we see yellow. So methyl orange was red, thymol blue was yellow. What does that tell you about the pH range? 
while the methyl orange is red, the pH is going to be less than about there, so maybe less than four. And if the thymol blue were yellow, it's somewhere between two and nine, or two and eight and a half or so. So if it's less than four, but bigger than two, then the pH has to be somewhere in that range. So bigger than two and less than four. So the pH is going to be between two and four. All right, so there we have it. We're looking at different indicators and their color changes. You should be able to predict the color of an indicator when you're given a chart like this, um, if you know the pH, or the other way around, if you see the color produced by an indicator, you should be able to come up with a possible range of pH values for that solution.